Hi, I'm Kelly Vaughn and welcome to Inside Indy. And tonight we're going to the symphony, sort of. <laughs> At least we have a couple of people in the studio who are going to take us there. They are maestro Dr. Keith Conda. Mm -hmm. Did I say it right? Yes, you did. I, oh my gosh, I got it right. Okay, he is the music director uh, for Fisher's Music Works and conductor for the White River Chamber Orchestra, right? Yes. Welcome to Inside Indy. Thank you, good to be here. And then we have Dr. Phoenix Park Kim. You are a professor and piano teacher at Indiana Wesleyan University. Yes. Welcome to Inside Indy. Thank you. You have a very, very special event coming up, an evening with Beethoven, uh, Triumph Over Disability. Mm -hmm. uh, because this is uh, March's National Disability Awareness Month. Yes, it is. And so I would never think about tying the music to such an event. But you've done this. Tell us about it. Well, it's exciting for us because 2020 is the 250th birthday of Ludwig van Beethoven, one of the greatest composers ever. Mm. And most people know also that he had a disability that grew worse with age, and that's the worst possible thing that can happen to a musician, which is deafness. Right. And amazing. in spite of losing his hearing and in spite of how that continued to get worse and worse, he persevered and he wrote some of his greatest music from the time he began to lose his hearing, thereby triumphing over a disability that at first drove him to such despair mm -hmm. that he even considered suicide. Mm -hmm. But he said, no, I'm not going to go down that road. I'm going to win. I'm going to triumph. And his fifth symphony, which is part of the program, is a testimony of that whole determination. Those opening four notes, ba -ba -ba -bum, that everyone knows so yeah, famously, yeah. he described as fate knocking at the door. And of course, his fate was that he was going deaf. But by the time you get to the last movement of the symphony, there is a triumphant, glorious last movement that shows his determination to say, I'm going to win. I'm going to triumph. Now, I never knew that was what the story was behind. I mean, I knew his story, but I didn't know that the Fifth Symphony was specifically about that. Mm -hmm. Wow. So when you're listening to that, now when I listen to it, I'll listen to it differently that I'm going to go through and feel what he was feeling, the opening and the, the, the lows and then the highs and then overcoming. And that's wow. what we want to, to make part of the concert. That it's going to be more of a, uh, a lecture recital, a, kind of a Bernstein Young People's Concert format, where I'm going to explain some things about the symphony before we play it. And so then when we actually go through it and people experience, what, like you said, what Beethoven was experiencing, they'll be able to live that with him, mm -hmm. that triumph over disability. Okay. Now, Dr. Park, Kim, you, you're, you're nodding your head over there uh, oh. in agreement. So did yeah. you want to add to that? Yeah, I think Beethoven completely fundamentally changed our uh, musical experience. It's not just a uh, sonic experience, but it's more, it really touches our heart because of this messages behind the music. That's why mm. we admire his music so much. It makes us better. Mm, mm, I like that. I like that. So take us to this evening, um, which again is on March, what's the date? 29th. 29th. Okay. It's actually 4 p.m. Sunday, March 29 is the concert. And we'll be opening the concert with um, a couple of things from his only opera. He only wrote one opera. It's called Fidelio. And um, mm -hmm. we'll be doing a march. It'll be an opening number for the orchestra. And then we have a so soprano soloist, Mindy Root, who is a veteran of, of opera uh, in New York City, will be singing uh, uh, an aria from that opera. And it also talks about triumph, the opera itself, not about triumph over disability, but triumph over oppression. It's a wonderful plot. You have a woman whose husband was a political prisoner, imprisoned for writing things as a journalist that criticized the government. And in order to try to save him, she disguises herself as a man by the name of Fidelio and gets a job in the prison. Mm. 
Mm. And she finds out that the people who are in charge of the prison are planning to kill her husband. And it is at that moment that she pours out in song the emotion of this mm. aria that will be sung. How can you be so cruel? How can you do this to my husband? And then to show Beethoven's versatility, we'll be doing a wind octet, eight wind players, give the strings a break. And then we'll conclude the first half of the program with Beethoven's Emperor Piano Concerto, the first movement of that concerto. And that's where Dr. Park Kim comes in. She is a master performer. She can tell you about her experience around the world, actually, mm. as a performer. And then the second half of the concert will be the Fifth Symphony. Oh, I love it. Okay, so tell us about your, your experiences in, in being a pianist and, and moving around the world. Well, I started playing piano when I was five years old. So I grew up playing piano. It just piano has been part of my entire life. And um, Did your parents introduce you to it or did you just kind of find your way into the, the living room and start, you know, pounding on the piano. You know, back then, we didn't have a lot of activities like we do for children. Uh -huh. And I was just bored at the age of five. And they decided, you know, a lot of uh, families did that at the time in Korea. I grew up in Korea. Uh -huh. They bought a piano so that I could just kind of play with it. <laughs> but then I showed just a, a lot of interest and I, became good at it, and the teacher starting to mention that to my parents, you should yeah. take her talent seriously. And so that's how it all began. Oh, wow. All right. So as a child, were you one of those children, you know, you could just kind of hear it and play it, or did you that teach That happened yourself? a lot, too, yeah. <laughs> yes. Just kind of run with it. Huh? Yeah, but I was very fortunate to have good teachers who took me uh, a very proper training route. So. Okay. okay. And now being a, a professor, so you teach others now. Yes, yes. I consider myself very fortunate uh, doing what I love, um, teaching mostly piano at Indiana Wesleyan University. Okay. Uh, I have a wonderful group of students who are aspiring pianists or uh, seeking professions in music industry, such as music therapy, music education. But their uh, primary instrument is piano, so okay. we, um, you know, experience the joy of you know exploring repertoire for written for piano okay and because I teach um, I also have a lot of uh, opportunities to perform and so mm. I got to perform at many different countries of course all over the United States and um, Sweden uh, Italy wow. Spain many countries in Asia wow. and Mexico City, Argentina, <laughs> wow. over 15 countries, I would say, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. And so on um, this afternoon, on the, uh, the 29th, mm -hmm. tell us what you'll be doing. I know, you know, Dr. Kunda has told us some of what he'll be doing and what will be going on, but specifically you, what will be ha what part will you yeah, be Yeah, so the concerto is basically, uh, the soloist gets to play the uh, important part along with orchestra. So this is a piece written for piano as a solo instrument. Okay. And uh, unlike a lot of classical uh, concerto, Beethoven, again, you know, that just came to um, this innovative, inventive idea about mm -hmm. this genre. Mm -hmm. And instead mm -hmm. of orchestra becoming the main and opening the uh, piece, this piece has this very heroic uh, solo is coming in in the very beginning, mm. playing this victorious virtuosic part. And I am so grateful to be asked to uh, play with Maestro Gunda. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now, Maestro, tell us what the Fisher's Music Works is, because I wasn't familiar with that. Fisher's Music Works is the professional um, organization in Fisher's for the performing arts. We've been in existence for seven years okay. and it is the parent organization for the White River Chamber Orchestra, which is our professional orchestra, the White River Wind Symphony, which is our professional band. There's also a brass quintet, uh, project opera, mm -hmm. um, and then there's also a volunteer chorus. So we have many things going on, and it's all under one umbrella organization. Rather than having a separate organization for opera and a separate organization for orchestra, mm -hmm. separate one for band, it's all under one umbrella. And uh, we're coming up on, on seven years that we've been incorporated 
in the state of Indiana. Wow, nice. Okay, one of the best kept secrets in Indiana because I was not until today actually. I know now. I know you um, are a conductor for the church, Legacy Bible Church, that you pastor as well. And can you tell folks a little bit about that as well? I'm the yeah. I don't do um, any conducting there at the church, okay. but I'm the pastor of Legacy Bible Church. Legacy Bible Church is five years old. Mm -hmm. uh, we're here in Noblesville, right down the street from you here in the studio, mm -hmm. actually. Mm -hmm. And um, we started Legacy Bible Church at a time when many churches were eliminating their traditional style of worship, and people were looking for what we do, which is in-depth Bible preaching and traditional music. And over the course of five years, we've attracted people from five counties who come to worship with us at Legacy Bible Church. Um, they come out of 11 different denominational backgrounds, but the things that, thing that ties everyone together is their love of traditional worship and their love of preaching mm. of the word. And so that's my full-time job. My time with Fisher's Music Works, I, I do volunteer okay. as a conductor, but my doctorate is in orchestral conducting. So, okay. um, I'm, so you're I'm, not having any conducting influence over the church choir. And then I'll say this too, that uh, I've, now I've seen you play there then. Mm -hmm. You were I play, performing. I play in the orchestra sure, there, but yeah. I have a wonderful music director at the church who is a retired music teacher and just wonderful, wonderful Christian man and a great conductor. And mm -hmm. he, he takes care of the music and I don't have to worry about it. I know it will be done, okay. done okay. well. Okay, but that is a huge draw, and what better way to draw people than than the way you worship, uh, mm -hmm. the way you all uh, do that at Legacy Bible, and it's really, really cool, really cool. So, um, date, again, time, location for an evening with Beethoven, Triumph Over Disability. Ticket prices, or where, where do we get tickets mm -hmm. for this? Um, the concert, again, as we mentioned, is Sunday afternoon. Uh, it's March 29. The time of the concert is 4 p.m. Concert will be about an hour and a half in length. Uh, tickets are $20 for adults. Under 18 is free for all Fisher's Music Works events because okay. we want children and youth experiencing great music without having to worry about the cost. Adults can purchase tickets, Fisher's Music Works, all one word, dot org, dot org, not dot com, but Fisher's Music Works, normal spelling for all those, dot org. They'll also be able to, once we get past March 1st, I don't know when this will air, I'm assuming this will air after, after March 1st, be able mm -hmm. to purchase tickets during the day, during the week at Legacy Bible Church, which is where the concert is, 2140 Greenfield Avenue in Noblesville. Okay, sounds good to me. Well, we appreciate you both coming in. Thank you. And it's going to be an awesome concert, and so people do check it out. Okay. Appreciate you so much, Dr. Kunda and Dr. Phoenix Park Kim. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. On Thank Inside you. Indy. And uh, we'll be back with more on Inside Indy, another huge performance just in time for Easter to celebrate Easter after this. So there you are, shuffling through a stack of resumes and you come to mind. This is it, first impression, my way in. But can my resume show you how I truly stand out? Like that I was studying, going to night school while working two jobs just to help my parents pay for groceries. Or being the first one to always step up. No, that's something you just can't put on paper. Look beyond the resume and discover new ways to develop great talent that is dedicated, hardworking, and determined like me. Here is my handle, and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today. And we're back here on Inside Indy. And boy, this show is all about uh, special productions that are happening. And this is the ultimate year. Uh, upon this rock and here uh, to tell us more about uh, this fabulous, fantastic uh, show is Pastor A. Thomas Hill, who is co 
and managing director for Upon This Rock Productions, right? That's right. And you are also the senior pastor of the Strings Church here in Indianapolis. I still am. Still are. Right. <laughs> you are. Thanks for joining us on Inside Indy. It's Indeed. good to be here. Thanks for inviting us. And we want to give your pro uh, props to your sister as well. Absolutely. She is the executive director, mm -hmm. right? That's right. Okay. She's the creator of the Upon This Rock Passion Play. Wow, yeah. wow. So, so this, this, which it's, it's been around for a long time. This will be a 36 year. 36 years, yes. wow. So what, what year would that have been then? With, with this, oh, you're gonna take what me back now, 19... 1984, I believe Somewhere it was. Okay, okay. Yeah. I was just coming out of college. Yeah, okay. <laughs> a, right. a youngin, a youngin. So um, how did it all start? Yeah. Um, my sister had created this play. You know, when we were coming up as kids, uh, as a little kid, she would always write these different plays. And, really? You know, we had seven in the family. So uh, she would give us our different parts. And we would, <laughs> you know, we would play act and the whole bit. So, so you had to act for her in her play. Exactly. I love it. I she, love was, it. she was directing, you know, long before really? uh, this. But uh, she put together one Easter, putting together an Easter production. And so, <clears throat> obviously, she just took the uh, story of Christ, the passion of Christ, and what he did and from Scripture and began to construct it, put it together at a local church here in the city of Indianapolis. And she was telling me about it. And she got all her characters together and the whole bit. And uh, I said, oh, this is pretty interesting. I said, you know what? Why don't I run the spotlight in the balcony, you know? because I hadn't even seen it yet, right? And I'm in the balcony and I've got the spotlight. We're in this church and, and it's going on. And the more it happened and unfolded, and it's a musical t as well, there I'm with the spotlight, tears is running down my face. And when it was all said and done, I said, you've got something here. Wow. You know, we've got to... We've and, got to move this thing forward. And, and that's saying a lot from a brother, because brothers don't always give a right. little sister. Is he older sister or younger sister? She's a year older. Oh, she's right. okay. Yeah, yeah. He'll give his sister, my brother. he be like. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> but she would do her props. I okay. felt that one. Mm -hmm. I felt that one. Wow. So wow. Uh, we moved uh, from the, the local church, Grace Church in Indianapolis, to uh -huh. uh, Short Ridge High School okay. uh, Auditorium. And the interesting thing, Kelly, uh, the person at, at Shortridge says, well, you're only going to need the, the bottom floor. Nobody uses the balcony. Mm -hmm. That wasn't true. Uh, we filled it up. And wow. after it was over, we got the word that they have never picked up uh, as much Kleenex in any event <laughs> than this one. So the people were moved. And from there, it just moved on. And we've been at Clues Hall and uh Currently, we're using Pike Performing Arts Center, a lot more intimate kind of setting, but you know, just a beautiful mm -hmm. uh, working atmosphere. What about it? Do you think brings people to tears? And you mentioned, uh, you know, this is upon this rock where we talked about the the motion picture. Was it the Passion of Christ? Passion of Christ, Christ and how right. it. And even when I think back, like I cried for two hours, and you don't even mm -hmm. really know what what specifically about it. But is there something specific about this sure. that brings people to tears? Well, you know. It's the story of the life, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And when you read that in scripture alone, you hear it preached from the pulpit, especially around Easter time. And it's for us to remember the great price that he paid for us. Mm -hmm. And it moves us every time. Every time we read it in scripture, every time we hear it from the pulpit, we're always moved again of this great sacrifice and price that, that Christ paid. And then to put it on stage, to give the visual is the thing that takes it to the next level. And that's what Up On This Rock does. Mm. It gives a visual of what's in scripture and also what we're known for is the music, the gospel music that just, you know what music does. When you add music mm. to something that's already moving, it's gonna move you some more. And so people that come to Up On This Rock, we say it's more than a play, it's an experience. Because when you show up, and you hear the story again, and you see it on stage, and then you hear the music backdrop behind it, you can't help but becoming a part of it. Yep. Uh, date, time, and location. This year, after 35 years, we are uh, not only doing it in Indianapolis Easter weekend, that's Good Friday and Saturday, April 10th and 11th, three performances, but we're launching it in Louisville, Kentucky, uh, okay. on Palm Sunday weekend, that's April 3rd and 4th, 
okay. uh, at the Louisville Palace, a beautiful theater in, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. So we're excited about that. This is our first launch outside of the city of Indianapolis. And we chose Louisville, Kentucky because we always have several bus loads that come to Indy every year for this passion play from Louisville, Kentucky, and Lexington and Jeffersonville, some of the other surrounding okay. areas. So we said, decided, you know what, we're gonna take it to them uh, uh, gotcha. in 2020. So April 34th in uh, Louisville, Kentucky at the Louisville Palace, and then April 10th and 11th at Pike Performing Arts Center uh, here in Indianapolis. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So you're getting ready for this as we speak. I mean, in terms of the Absolutely. practice and, and oh my gosh, I yes. can't even imagine. The rehearsals are going forth. Uh, we're excited about that. Um, the tickets are already, you know, online. And Louisville, Kentucky is through Ticketmaster. You call the Louisville Palace. Uh, and, and ask for uh, or look for Upon This Rock. Upon This Rock. You can okay. go online, actually, okay. and do that. And then in Indianapolis is through the Opponents Rock Box office. And one key number that they can call and get all the, everything you needed to know but were afraid to ask is uh, at 317 285. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm gonna get it right. Uh, 317 285. And I've got mm -hmm. it here. Mm -hmm. Oh five five one. It's on the screen. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's on, on the, the screen. <laughs> Look on your screen, <laughs> and you can get all the information. Or go to our website. You can see a trailer on our website. Okay. Uh, In fact, we might show a little yes, of that UTRpro. here. Yes, utrpro. dot com, so, yeah. and uh, just get a little taste of the opponent's rock experience. Okay. Okay. Wow. Well, I am really proud of what you guys are doing. And I guess the question for me would be, why not Broadway? Have, has anybody come knocking on your door or who they, they want it elsewhere? Or is that something your sister aspires to take it, you know, take it to the East Coast? Yeah. Well, we always, because we, we get uh, patrons from all over that come every year. We have mm -hmm. bus loads that come in and everybody's like, when you gonna bring it to our city? When you're going to take it here, take oh, it there? Okay. So uh, with Louisville being our first launch outside of Indy, each year we want to select a specific city. City, right. Uh, we, Got, we got our eyes on another city. I'm not going to say it right now uh, for next year. Chicago. <laughs> well, could be. It could very well could be. Could be. I right. think I guessed that one. I don't know. I was like, it's got to be Chicago. Exactly. That'd be awesome, though. But, you know, we always get uh, feedback from different ones and saying, wow, uh -huh. this is Broadway material. I mean, you got some professional singers, actors. Uh, oh, yeah. A, a number of our own original songs uh, that's also a part of it as well. Mm -hmm. So... It's a good, it's not a play, oh. it's an experience. Okay, I can appreciate that. Yeah. So then, and I think I approached you about this several years ago about putting it on television, but mm -hmm. you were a little hesitant about that. Well, and you know, we did once. We had a, a national uh, impact network mm -hmm. actually came in and did uh, one year, I can't think of what year it was, uh, and they wanted to broadcast it, and, and we did. The, the only challenge, and they wanted to do it again, but. The only challenge that, that we were having with that is for plays, it's different than a movie reel. You know, you're filming it for a movie. Play is a little bit different. You, for, for a theater, you have to be there. You know, mm -hmm. it's like you, you have to be there to experience it. You know, we do DVDs and people can watch it, but it's nothing like mm -hmm. being on site in the theater and being a part of what's going down. Because right. I think about like Tyler Perry, you know, it, yeah. it, a lot of his plays at, at right. ended up being movies or right. even vice versa. And he's been very good at capturing. And obviously they're not as dramatic as something like Upon This Rock, a lot of it's comedy, yeah. but I was yeah. just thinking like, uh, well, it's not like it hasn't been done that people are shooting plays. Oh, sure, sure. Or experiences. And we know even with some of Tyler Perry's plays, you can kind of enjoy them as you watch them being filmed. Mm -hmm. But then we also know that those that attend uh, get a little bit more out of it because they're a part, a participant of it. But we're not ruling anything out. Okay. So anybody listening, you know, this, this <laughs> wants, wants to move it to that direction, we, we have an Okay, ear. yeah, I'll call my, I have your people call my people. Please, or I'll have my people that. call your people. <laughs> I love it, I love it. Okay, well, again, April 10th through the 11th in Indianapolis. Right, April 10th through 11th in Okay, and it is Upon This Rock, and um, as far as Indianapolis participation, anybody that you'd like to highlight for this year? I know you, you mentioned the, uh, I can't see her name here again, but yeah, Beverly, Beverly Crawford. Crawford. Right. But um, when it comes to local folks. Yeah, we have. Who uh, plays Jesus? You know, that's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, my son, 
my oldest son. Oh, really? Okay. Plays the role of Jesus and does a superb job. I love in it. In fact, if okay. you watch the trailer, you'll see him in action. Okay. And I'm so proud of that because he started out just a little kid, you know, as a part of the stage vocals, you know, and each year wow. just grew into that. And So he is really a part oh. of the whole yes. development of this play over the years. Right. Wow. So he, as well as another fine actor, Daniel Martin, who uh, also uh, is part of the cast with IRT and some other productions, another great actor. Wow. So, uh, you know, the two of them together right. okay. are dynamic. Okay. Absolutely. And I get to play the role, been playing for years, the role of Simon Peter. Oh, really? So You're in it too. You'll get to it. see me walk on water. Oh, uh, wow. Right. Now that I got to go scene. see. I got so, <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it, it's special. Wow. Right. Oh, I love it. Well, thank you for coming in and sharing. And folks, uh, the information is on the screen. You got to go see Upon This Rock. Uh, and tickets, again, go to the website. Or, or If you go to the website, it's going to give you information for Louisville as well as Indianapolis. Okay. And that website is on the screen, but it's uh, you, what is it? UTR Pro mm -hmm. for Upon This Rock production, utrpro.com. Okay. Or call 317-285-0551, extension 1. Yes. Okay. We appreciate it. Pastor Hill, thanks so much for joining us. I'm glad to be here. Inside thank you so much Indy. for fitting us in. All right. Okay. All and right. thank you for joining us. And I'm Kelly Vaughn. We'll see you next time. We'll see you at Upon This Rock. That's right. right? That's right. Bye-bye. <laughs> Here is my handle and here is my spell. When I get all steamed up, then I shout. Tip, Tip me over and pour me out. Oh. It only takes a moment to make a moment. Cheers. Take time to be a dad today.